Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this kind of design right here uh, using the help of an Illustrator plugin called Randomill, which randomizes properties across large groups of objects. So it should only take a couple minutes with the help of the plugin. So let's get right into it. First thing I want to do I'm going to make a canvas that is the same size. So that is going to be a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. Let's go ahead and set that up here. And then I'm going to create a grid of squares that we will randomize into this kind of design using a few of the features within the random mill plugin. So let's go ahead and make the grid of squares. I'm just going to go ahead and keep copying them over using Control or Command D if you're on a Mac. That uh, copies the last action you did, so that's how I'm doing this. So now we have a grid of squares here, and let's set up Randomill so that it tries to get it as close to this kind of result as possible. So first thing we want to do is change or randomize the fill color of all of these squares. Now, what we're going to use is a set of four colors that I have kind of chosen um, prior to this. And to show you what those colors are, I'm just gonna create four squares and I will apply those colors to them. So there's going to be a gradient that goes from yellow to orange. There's going to be a blue, a red, and this kind of, uh, greenish bluish gradient here. So you can see those colors there. It doesn't take very long to set up, very easy to make. And we're going to be using these four colors to randomly distribute them across this grid of squares. So I'm going to add them into the set here. And we're going to want to randomize the strokes as well with the same exact colors. We're going to turn on the stroke color feature and we're going to mouse over to color set and then add those colors in again. I did get rid of those squares so we're going to have to add them in from the swatches panel here. We'll do that by selecting all of these colors and clicking add swatches. You can see that those same colors have been added in. We are also going to want to randomize the stroke weight. I think uh, a good range would be anywhere from zero to, to eight points with a one point increment in the stroke. That seems good to me. We're just gonna collapse some of these options. Uh, the scale is gonna be anywhere from, I don't know, 50 to 200% scale for each one of these squares. That way we'll get a nice size variation that you can see here. Once that is set up, that is the default setting, so we're just gonna leave that alone. Uh, for rotation, you can see that in the original design, all of the squares are rotated 45 degrees. So what we're going to do is set up a 45 degree minimum and maximum. So that way each square will be rotated exactly 45 degrees. For opacity, I'm thinking we want to use anywhere from a 65% minimum opacity to 100% maximum. And one of the key randomizations that has been applied to this pattern here has been the blend mode. So we're going to want to uh, randomize the blend mode as well. We only need a few of them. We don't need every one of them checked. So I'm going to click uncheck all and then just check the ones that we want to use, which are normal, lighten, screen, and overlay. I think that should do it. And you can see that the original pattern is not in a grid-like sort of arrangement. So we're also going to want to apply a random positional offset to each one of these squares. So I think the default settings are probably pretty good. It'll move each square horizontally anywhere from negative 72 points to 72 points, and it'll do the same in the vertical direction as well. So. Now that we have that all set up, let's go ahead and make sure all our squares are selected that we want to apply this to and click the randomize button. 
And there you have it. We have an arrangement of these now diamonds that is starting to get closer to the result that we're looking for. So it looks like the scale in the original design is still still has more variation in it. So these squares are about as small as we want them to get. So what we want to do, we're going to turn off all these features. We're going to turn scale back on and we're going to make it anywhere from 100 to 200 percent scale just to scale all of them again. And there you go. That's getting a little bit closer. Maybe we'll apply a positional offset same as we did before just to see what that looks like. And that's that's looking pretty good. I think we're getting there. Um, it does look like the original design still has a few big squares that we haven't quite reached. So let's randomly select about a quarter of these. We're going to do that using the random selection function here. So we're just going to type in 25%. We'll select a quarter of the squares. And then what we're going to do is apply that same scale we did before, anywhere from 100 to 200%. We'll scale those squares up. Okay, now we're getting closer to the range of size that we see in here. But there are still some kind of uh, some spots of, uh, of blank space here. And I think a quick and easy way to get around that would be just to take the entire group, copy it. I'm going to hit Control C to copy and Control Shift V to paste it in place. And I'm just going to go ahead and rotate the whole thing 90 degrees. That should provide a lot more coverage here. If there's still some blank spots, you can go ahead and just select some random groups of squares and copy them over. And there we go. We have pretty much the entire canvas covered in these diamonds. So let's go ahead and enlarge this a little bit just to make sure. I'm going to select everything and group it. And now we're going to create a clipping mask so that this design does not extend past the boundaries of the canvas. So the canvas is a thousand pixels wide. So I'm just going to create a square that is the same size and then center it on the canvas. I'm also going to select the group behind it and then hit control or command seven if you're on a Mac. Uh, control seven to create a clipping mask. And now, as you can see, we've got a pretty similar result. Um, as the pattern below. So in just a few minutes we've created this cool design using the features in the Randomill plugin to which I will leave a link uh, down in the description below. And uh, if you'd like to see tutorials for these other two designs I will leave a link to those as well. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, if you like the plugin you know give it a look. I've definitely ran into multiple scenarios where I've needed something like this and it's happened to me enough times to where I decided to finally make this. So I hope you guys like the plugin. Check it out if it's something uh, you think you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and uh, have a good one.